Good day. We are back to do some more astrophotography. Um, I thought uh, today or this video do a full astro process. So from the setup to the capturing and the whole kind of processing, pre-processing, and show you how I post process my data. So maybe this will two a two series video or a single video. I don't yet know, but yeah, let's get on. Okay, let's go through a bit of what we have for this setup. Um, start with the tripod. It is an aluminum steel, or <laughs> no, not steel, aluminum tripod from uh, Skywatcher. Came with the Skywatcher mount, and the mount is an uh, Skywatcher NEQ6 Pro. It's a heavy go-to mount. Can take a pail of 18 kilos. And it's just a workout, it works perfectly almost every night. Furthermore, we have two PAL cables, one for the uh, mount and one for the ASI Air, the computer. And we have two counterweights, five kilos each. To, we need two for this OTA because it's quite heavy OTA. Then we have uh, three different, no, no, four different uh, power cables. So these, that is these black ones. Then we have a tray to secure the legs on the tripod. The, we have the guide scope uh, with the guide camera, the ZWO120MM Mini. And of course the ASI Air, the computer. This is just the perfect thing to have. It just makes astronomy so much easier. If you want to, you know, not having to stay out cold with your computer in night, get yourself one of these. They are relatively cheap and they just, they make it just so easy to do this hobby without having to freeze off your fingers while doing the acquisition part of the hobby. And then you might wonder why I have an empty toilet paper roll here. But that is actually a dew shield for my guide scope. And we have a laser collimator. Yeah, I collimate my scope every night just to be certain that I get decent data and I'm not out of collimation. And, uh, uh, you know, in Newtonian, you need to collimate it. Uh, one thing I don't have here, but I have it uh, on my camera, is a Omegon uh, two inch comma corrector just to just make sure that I have a bigger usable field of view. Coma corrector. And finally we have the OTA, the optical tube assembly. It is a reflector, it's an 8 inch F5 Newtonian, a thousand meter focal length. It's relatively cheap with this one. It is not a quattro, those are a bit more expensive. Also I have a relatively cheap focuser. So I think this was the equivalent of around 400 US dollars I bought it for, so yeah, let's start setting up. Okay, so what you're looking at now is the polar alignment uh, feature in the ASA Air. And over there you have the green numbers which tell you far, how far away I am in altitude and azimuth. And on the other side you kind of see the progress bar from 1 to 3. And usually if I'm within 2 to 3 arc minutes uh, away from the pole, I'm usually quite satisfied. So you can watch the time lapse of be fiddling about with uh, these numbers. Okay, so the next thing we are doing is to do a preview to uh, make sure that we are in focus and that we are aligned 
and we tell the mount to go to our target M33 after it's doing a plate solving of our uh, image and then we can use the sky atlas on the ASIR to find where we want to be and also the field orientation and things like that and then we head into uh, the guiding uh, setup where we start taking looping with the guide camera and calibra calibrating the guide camera and then we hit go into auto run and we start the 300 second ISO 1600 exposures with a one pixel dithering between each exposure. Okay, so we are processing the data that we collected, so what we want to do is head over into a program known as Zero. Uh, it is a kind of a, you know, cheap uh, version of uh, PixInsight, uh, but it has a lot of great tools and I use three programs, or actually two, but one neural network. It is uh, Zero, uh, Star++ and GIP. I kind of use them in different um, ways, uh, so I'll take you through my entire um, post-processing uh, process, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll learn a thing or two. Um, if you though are a experienced as a photographer, I'm not sure you will learn a lot from me because I've really only been doing this for about a year, and a lot of the techniques I have learned uh, in processing, I learned in the past four or five months, so. Yeah, but if you're new to the hobby, I think you can learn a lot by learning from a beginner astro astrophotographer like me. Because, you know, I only kind of dip my feet barely into the hobby, so, you know, uh, because I'm not that deep into it, I can explain it in a way that a beginner might understand a bit better. We'll see. So, uh, just find our stacked TIFF. And then we have a quite decent setup, and you already can see that this is going to look pretty good. We just need to do some calibration and some stretching. So, uh, put the preview back into linear so we can see what we're working on. So, let's start with a photometric color calibration. So, type in the target, which is M33. That's it. The, it's a Sinbad catalog with a triangular pinwheel, Messier 33. That is correct. The focal length is, you know, I did crop it, so I'm going to say 1200. And a pixel scale of 5.8. No, sorry, pixel size of 5.8. That gives us a resolution of about 1, which is, you know, pretty good. And actually, I'm going to change that to the correct focal length because I think that's going to help it. Because the resolution. Uh, then we need to select the entire image, like that, and hit run, and hope for the best. And yeah, it's finished with RGB and it looks a bit better, I think it'll look better in auto stretch. Yeah. <coughs> so you can see it kind of remove that red uh, yellowish bias which is uh, very good next we head into background extraction because we have a bit of a background background here which isn't nice even with calibrated flat so we're gonna take 10 samples per line leave this moving grid tolerance as it is and hit generate and then we just wanna right click and remove anything that is not in, uh, I mean, remove everything that is in galaxy, so we don't eat away at uh, that bit of color. You know, I think that looks pretty good. And hit compute background. 
And you see, it, it kind of made some mistakes just because it had a star selected. Um, so let's just uh, try to correct some of this as we see when it's kind of messing up. And yeah, we just need to, you know, be a little careful using this because it's it can sometimes muller your data. darken background anyway so I think this is good enough. I'm actually gonna crop away those worst corners where it doesn't manage to do a good job so crop and then into the RGB tab. Remember we are in the auto stretch so back into linear just to make sure and then enter remove green noise for some reason, average neutral, it doesn't um, let you change the amount, so I'm going to maximum mask, and just, I usually think that 20 is enough, so take that, back to average neutral, and apply. And boom, it's applied. Now we can start stretching it, now you can use a bit of the other stretching methods, like uh, arc sign or generalized hyperbolic transformation. But I kind of like the manual way of doing it, so just pushing the middle slider and stretching with the black point. And hit apply. And I do this like until I can start to see some noise coming through. So yeah, just keep doing this a bunch of times until it looks about right. Like, especially in the background, you want to see, like, now you see we're starting to bump up to the noise, so, so back, back off a touch. Yeah, I think, maybe. Then, go into color saturation. And I apply a global color saturation usually here, like, somewhere around 30. It's usually good now. Zoom in a bit. Just the difference. Yeah, and actually down this background factor a bit so we get a more harsh saturation and hit apply. Okay. Now we have our stars uh, layer finished. So we're gonna hit the save and I'm gonna write Cyril stars and we want to save the TIFF file so StarNet can use it <coughs> and then head into the correct folder hit save and you need 16 bit because uh, StarNet can't use 32 bits so we'll use that and hit save and we find StarNet which is a neural network that removes stars from images. We hit open and browse and we try to find the target and 33 and serial stars. And then we just change the name to serial star less and hit run. Before I go into uh, GIMP, I am gonna go into Cyril and do a little trick because the stars are pretty, you know, heft, hefty in this image. So I'm gonna do a little trick I learned uh, from a YouTuber known as Nico Carver or nebulaephotos.com on YouTube. You might know about. And what I do, I just, I just like unstretches the image. So the stars kind of 
they get less prominent, I guess you would say. It's like to that point, I guess it's pretty good. So I can show the difference here. So that's that was before, and that is now. So we're gonna export that as well. We we'll call it medium stretch dot tiff. Just put it in the same folder and hit save at 16 bit TIFF. And then we're gonna run start it again. Alright, finally we are done. Then we can head over into GIMP. Now GIMP is a free program, just like the other two I've used, and it is basically Photoshop with just a bit less um, you know, things to use. So, alright, we start with open, we find our medium stretch dot tiff, open that, and hit into open as layers, and open medium stretch uh, starless tiff. And what we'll do is we will subtract the kind of starless layer, and we're left with this beautiful uh, star field, basically, which is going to help us to really bring out the galaxy and not saturate and you know destroy the stars. So next thing we do is we open the uh, serial starless. Here we are. Ah, uh, isn't that? Beautiful. So, first thing, copy from visible and I'll name this background plus black point. And we're gonna do just that. We are gonna bring down the background. Firstly, you just push the black point to touch like that. You know, push down the you know, latter half of the Bike. You can actually push a bit further because of that little smudge. Or I could just try to <coughs> heal it out, so I'm gonna try that. So, new layer, call it heal, and head into the heal tool, find uh, the smudge, uh, adjust the size of the brush, and make a control sample, and just kind of, you know, remove that. Quite nicely. Now this is more like oil painterly I feel when you're doing this but you know just try to find these smudges and you know, just get rid of them to make the background look nice and smooth. Alright and then we're gonna do a um, global contrast pull out a bit more uh, detail. The way you do this, you kind of make a point quite far up in the histogram and you pull it down in the shadows, like uh, that. Zoom in and make sure you don't you know, destroy the signal, which means you know, bring up some bad things. Next thing global saturation so just hit into saturation and just you know pull it up until you know you reach that noise point again so I find around 300 is usually okay <coughs> okay now we are gonna do uh, something you know data photographers tell you not to do and that is do some selective masking. So I'm gonna do uh, take a gal galaxy mask like that, uh, and then do a layer mask, grayscale copy of layer, add, and show layer mask, and then we're gonna 
Good, so stretch this so we want a complete black background. But we want to add our edits on the galaxy. So kind of, you want to get the outer arms, but you don't want to get the background that much. So it's kind of a balance point this to kind of get that galaxy nicely in the mask, but the rest not so. Disable show layer mask and then we go into saturation, actually hue saturation so we can saturate individual colors. So I'm gonna take red here pull red up a bit blue as well uh, I, there's a lot of like nice blue arms on this galaxy so push that up the yellows a bit as well I think that looks pretty good. We also want to apply a bit of a uh, contrast on the galaxy. Just to the preview and just check out what it does, like that. We have a bit of contrast on the outer arms as well. And then another layer mask. <coughs> this time we want to add some detail to the galaxy. So same thing again. We want to only apply this to the galaxy, not the background. So like that, push the white point in. Something like that. Yeah, maybe push the black point a bit further. Yeah, I think that's good. Then filter, enhance, and high pass. What a high pass filter does, if you don't <coughs> know, is it enhances uh, fine details, which is what we want. So zoom in and see that you're getting nice detail here. I usually push it quite far. Then we first try hard light see what that does look if we're kind of satisfied with it see it, it brings forth a lot but just check out soft light now I find soft light doesn't work that well on astro images especially on galaxies but I usually put down the opacity layer down to around 60 which I think works pretty good in this instance you get a lot of those uh, dust lines a bit better yeah new from visible yet again and this time I'm gonna lower the background just a touch more. No, we do not want to clip the background. But we do want to bring it down so it doesn't cause any problems in the final image. Alright, and I'm gonna do some final uh, saturation adjustments. Especially on the reds, which I think coming through that well. So let's just see if I kind of go crazy on the reds. Okay, not maybe not that much, but around 70 is probably decent. A bit of cyan as well. A bit of uh, all these other colors. Yeah, I think that's starting to look pretty decent. So what we want to do now is take the stars uh, Layer, it new from visible, and copy, and copy it over to uh, this part, and then we wanna go to screen. Ah, now I think this looks pretty awesome, and full screen.
Okay, the image that uh, is up on the screen now is the uh, galaxy image that we just processed. And I gotta say, I really like it. It's uh, uh, without doubt the best galaxy image I've ever taken. And also kind of uh, it also shows the power of a Newtonian that even though with a small field of view usable uh, compared to the full frame I have on my uh, camera, it, it is um, capable of doing some uh, crazy stuff. And uh, also gotta say thanks everyone for uh, for getting the last video up to 6.7 thousand. You know, I, I really didn't expect it to blow up that much, but here we are suddenly. And um, so, uh, until next time, clear skies, everyone.